Former ambassador at large, Nathan Sales, joins me now. Mr. Ambassador, how long do you see this war lasting? Israel Gaza. Well, Stu, it's really hard to say. We know that Israel has identified very ambitious goals for its war, completely eradicating Hamas to the point that it's no longer capable of governing in Gaza and no longer presents a military threat to the Jewish state. That's not going to take a couple of weeks. It may not even take a couple of months. This could be a conflict that stretches out for a while. And that means it's really important for the Biden administration to provide Israel the support it needs to win this war as quickly as possible. We, we cannot make the same mistake we made in Ukraine of dribbling out assistance bit by bit, giving them enough to fight to a stalemate, but not to win. We need Israel to win quickly and decisively so that we can move on rather than facing a stalemate. Uh, you know, a lot of people, what I hear frequently, just in sort of idle conversation. People are worried that we're on the brink of World War III. If someone would suggest that to you, what would you say? Well, Stu, I mean, we're looking at a level of geopolitical unrest that we haven't seen since before World War II. I mean, it feels like we're in the 1930s. Um, we've seen catastrophe in Afghanistan with the U.S. withdrawal. We've seen a failure to deter Vladimir Putin from invading Ukraine. We're on the brink of a, of a sweeping war in the Middle East. And all of these things, what they have in common is that America is seen as weak. And when America is seen as weak, that is provocative. That, senses, that sends a signal to our adversaries that they can act out, that they can be aggressive. So Xi Jinping is paying attention. Vladimir Putin is paying attention. The mullahs in Iran are paying attention, and they're going to take an opportunity if they see America stepping back from its leadership role in the world. You think Trump, a second presidency, would fix things? You know, I think anything would be an improvement over the current occupant of the White House. Um, we, we've seen a cascading series of foreign policy failures going back to Afghanistan. And I have to say, um, you know, I don't see it getting better unless this administration is prepared to admit that its Iran policy yeah. was flawed from the beginning, giving billions of dollars in oil revenue to the mullahs. Where do you think that money's going? You know, it's not going to build bridges and tunnels in Tehran. It's going to fund terror proxies like Hamas, like Hezbollah. Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for being with us today. We appreciate thank it. Thank you, Stu. Yes,